Okay, good morning, students at the Jamaica. Yes. Yeah, that's all right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right, good morning, students at the Jamaica School of Preaching International. And good morning, good afternoon, good night to all of you wherever your time zone is in the world, who might be joining us live on the internet. Welcome to the Hebrew language class. The Hebrew language class is coming from the Jamaica School of Preaching and Biblical Studies in Mona Heights, Kingston, Jamaica. And I'm glad that you are joining us. We're going to start by going to God in prayer. Father in heaven, I pray that you will be with me, that you will enable me at all times to make the study of this first language that the Old Testament was written in as simple as possible, that everyone may learn it well to the point that each person may be able to use it to do research into the Old Testament, to find out the meaning of words, and to reply to those that may be claiming that there are contradictions between one scripture and another, but overall to deepen our understanding of what you have revealed in the Old Testament. Help, the, help us all as well for those that study the Greek language, the first language that the New Testament was written in, that you will give them the aptitude to learn this language and to be able to use it in their study of your word. I give you thanks for the opportunity that has been given to me by the administration of this school to lead in the learning of this language. And I pray that you will give us success as we go through the language together. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, now we have already covered lesson number 25, which deals with the preposition cuff and the object pronoun endings that are attached to it. We then looked last week, Friday, at Lesson 26, in which we looked at the preposition min, which means from, with the object pronoun endings that are attached. And so we're going to be reviewing both lessons in preparation for test number one next week, Thursday, God willing. However, this will not apply to one of you, you know already. This will not apply to you. You will have your separate test, your test next week, Brother Everton. You need to prepare yourself to be able to write the Hebrew alphabet, okay, from beginning to end. Okay, well, you don't have to name them, but to write the symbols down. You don't have to put Aleph or Beth, but put the symbols down so that I can see that you have learned the alphabet. That is the very foundation. Once you can recognize and understand the, the meaning of each letter, then you will be able to put it together to form words, and then put the words together to form sentences. So this is the very foundation. Um, those YouTube Hebrew alphabet tutorials that are at the end of lesson one, they are good because they put the Hebrew alphabet to a tune. 
They're very good. Um, but you have your own method of studying, so I leave you free to prepare yourself. So that is for you. But this review here is a review for the class here. Um, I should have said lesson 25 instead of put lesson one, should have put lesson 26 instead I put lesson two. Before I send this to you, to your email, I will correct this. I will correct this and send the corrected um, title to you. Okay, everything else is in order. General objectives of this review are one, to review lesson 25, object pronoun endings and the preposition cuff. Number two, to review lesson 26, the preposition men, which means from in English, with object pronoun endings. The specific objectives, which will give you some clue as to what you should study in preparation for the test is, are, number one, at the end of the review of lesson 25, the students will have identified the special form of cuff to which the object pronoun endings are placed. So remember, there are two ways of writing cuff. The regular way is just the cuff, the letter cuff, with the um, simple shiva underneath it, or even without the simple shiva. That is cuff in its regular form. But then you have a form that is pronounced kemo, C-E-M-O, and when you're going to be putting the pronoun endings to kemo, kemo becomes kamo. So you need to identify the special form of kaf to which the object pronoun endings are placed. More on that shortly. Number two, at the end of the review of lesson 25, the students will have translated the special form of kaf. Kaf, whether it is in its regular form or in its special poetical form, means either as or like in English. As or like. Number three, at the end of the review of lesson 25, the students will have identified any two of the 10 forms of the object pronoun endings. Now, since I haven't told you, who you should study, it does not mean that I am going to select for you which two you should prepare. It means that you need to be familiar with all of the forms of cuff, the endings rather, the object pronoun endings that will be attached later to cuff. Be familiar with all the 10 forms, but on the test itself, you will not have to put the meaning of all of the 10 forms on your paper. You will only have to select from the 10, you will have the 10 there, just select from the 10, any two of them, by putting the English translation beside it. Okay? For example, what does me mean? What does a car mean? What does a mean? You put any two, any two translation right there in answering that question. Number four, the end of the review of lesson 25, the students will have translated any two of the 10 forms of cuff with the object pronoun endings. Now in number four, you're not dealing merely with the endings, but you're dealing with cuff, that is camo, with the endings. So you need to know all of them 
in order to be able to choose any two to translate it. For example, the first one, which is common to both masculine and feminine genders, is kamoni. Kamo is the main part, it is as or like, and the ending is ni, n-i. You join them together, kamo ni, kamoni. Well, kamo means as, and ni means me. So kamoni means as me, or like me. Or say, you have kamo again, and this, the, the second person singular masculine is, the ending is eka. No, yeah. Is ka, not eka, ka. So you join kamo and ka together and you have kamoka. Ka means the or use. Kamo means as or like. So kamoka means as the or as you or like the or like you. So be familiar with all of the forms that you can choose any two of them. I'm not going to be telling you which two because it will be your choice. You choose any two in the test. Be able to translate any two of the 10 forms of kaf with the object pronoun endings. Number five, at the end of the review of lesson 26, the students will have identified what is placed immediately after min. That is the word from. And before the object pronoun endings in the first six forms of min, meaning from. Let me just remind you. Min by itself means from. But when you, some changes take place, First of all, the noon or the N drops out, leaving me, MI. The letter beside the, the, the MI now has a dot placed in the middle of it, which means that that letter is to be double. Well, what letter is that? The letter that comes right after min is another mem, our English M. So what you now have is me, that is M-I, and you have M or mem with a dot in the middle of it, meaning that it is not just M, but M-M. So you have M-I-M-M, that's the main part. And to that you add the endings, okay? so. Be able to identify what is placed after men. What you place after men is the letter men. More on that shortly. Number six, at the end of the review of lesson 26, the students will have identified any one, just one, of the 10 object pronoun endings that come at the end of men. So I'm just asking for what? Number seven, at the end of the review of lesson 26, the students will have translated any two of the ten forms of men with their different object pronoun endings. So you'll have the ten forms of men right there on the screen, but you select any two of the ten that you remember quite well, and you translate what the min means with the pronoun endings. More on that shortly. So let us now go into each one of these objectives. First of all, identify the special form of cuff and translate the special form of cuff. Okay, so the special form of cuff. The ordinary form of cuff looks like this. 
This is our English K, meaning as or like. But the special form of Kaf is Kemo. This is the as or the like that you have in poetry, Hebrew poetry, Kemo. But when the object pronoun endings are being placed at the end of Kemo, the simple Shua is replaced by a Kames A, long A, Kamo, Kamo. So this is the special form of Kaf. This is the regular form of Kaf. This is the special form of Kaf. And you're going to add the object pronoun endings after the Kamo. Okay? So this is the special form of Kamo. And this is what it means, whether in this form or that form, they mean as or like. As or like. So what is the special form of kaf to which you're going to add the object pronoun endings? Kamo. Kamo. And what does kamo mean in English? As or like. The next objective is identify any two of the ten forms of the object pronoun endings to be attached to cuff. Now this would mean that you have to memorize these object pronouns doing well on the test. Okay, so these are the ten. There are ten. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All you will need to know are any two of these endings. Any two. Okay? Any two of them. I'm not going to tell you what two you should choose. That's up to you. Any two of them. Make sure you choose the ones you really remember. So here they are. Me means me. It's common to both the masculine gender and the feminine gender. Ka means the, and it is referring to the masculine gender. Ku means the, it is referring to the feminine gender. Who means him. Ha means her. Nu means us, it is common, just like me, to masculine and feminine genders. Chem, with the M, means you, when you're referring to more than one person of the masculine gender or a place that is in the masculine gender, or more than one object that is in the masculine gender. Ken is you, plural, when you're referring to that which is in, or persons who are in the feminine gender. Aim means them, when you're referring to people, or places or objects that are in the masculine gender. And hain or heina means them, when you're referring to um, females in the feminine gender or places or objects that are feminine in gender. So know these endings. It's a matter of memorizing them. Any question on this? You will not need to translate all of them, just two of them, two of the ten. But know them. You will have to select which ones you will translate. The next objective is translate any two of the ten forms of kaf with the object pronoun endings. So you have the special form of kaf, which is kamo. Notice kamo, kamo, 
Kamo, Kamo, Kamo, Kamo. It's just that down here, you have Ka instead of Kamo. These last four only has Ka instead of Kamo. But the first six have Kamo. And the endings are attached to all of these. You have Ni, Ka, K, Hu, Ha, Nu, Kem, Ken, Kem, Hain, or Kena. So you have Kamoni, like me. Kamok, like thee. Kamok, sorry, Kamoka, like thee. Kamok, like thee. Kamohu, like him. Kamoha, like her. Kamonu, like us. Kakem, like you. Kaken, like you. Kahen, like them. Kahen or Kahena, like them. Okay, know this. You're only going to be asked to translate any two of the ten forms. Any two of the ten forms of Kaf with the object pronoun endings. Any question? Okay. Now concerning Min. We're looking at what is placed after Min. That is the preposition from. And before the object pronoun endings. Notice. When the preposition Min. Meaning from. As object pronoun endings added to it, a second mem or our English M is placed between it and most endings. Okay, so what happens is the noon drops out, leaving me, and you put another mem right here. But to compensate for the loss of the noon, a dot is placed in the middle of the second mem, so it is repeated, it is doubled, it is mem, mem. You have mem, you have curie or i, short i, you have mem, mem. But one mem with the dot in the middle showing that it is to be repeated. And then you add these endings to M I M N. That's what you have. You have MIM. You add the endings. These are the endings to MIM. The endings are as follows. You have, N, you have any, meaning me. You have a car, which is the. You have a, which is the. You have Enu, which is him. You have Ena, which is her. Enu again, just like up here, which is us. Um, you're not going to have a context, but you would really need to have a context for the test because you just have to choose, identify any one, just one, any one of the ten object pronoun endings. You won't need a context. You're not, you're not translating sentences and paragraphs. So you just need to know any one of the ten object pronoun endings. Endo is us. It continues over on the next slide. You have something I need to tell you about this one. Identify any one of the ten object pronoun endings. You have chem which is you, masculine, can, which is you, feminine, hem, which is them, masculine, hen, which is them, feminine. Now, you add these endings to M-I-M-M. Add these endings to M-I-M-M. Look at this. 
I M N. M I M N. M I M N. That's the main part. M I M N. M I M N. M I M N. Add it to these, and you have the any added to it, the car added to it, the A added to it, the NU added to it, the ENA, the ENA added to it, the ENU added to it. So, MEMENI means from me. MEMEKA is from thee. MEMEK is from thee. MEMENU is from him. Mimena, mimena is from her. Mimenu is from us. So translate any two, any two of the ten forms of men with their object pronoun endings. This is the, the men with the object pronoun endings attached. You need to know any two. No, sorry. Yeah, any two of them. Any two. This is the first six. And then the last four, you don't have the second mem that is placed right here. The last four will only have me, as you will see now. The last four, well, the last, the, the, the two here, you have the chem, because you're adding chem and ken to men without a second mem coming between men and the endings. So you don't have mim, you don't have mim chem, you have me chem from you, me ken from you. And concerning the last two, you add hem and hen to me without a second mem coming between um, between the, the mem and the endings. Now the reason why the, the I changes to an E is because the rule says that you cannot put a dot in the, in the, in the guttural letters. These are guttural letters. Um, get letters that are formed at the back of your throat. And because you can't double these letters, then the, the I has to lengthen to an, a long E. So this is why the last two is are mayhem from them and mayhem from them. But you only need to know, be able to translate any two of these forms of men with their object pronoun endings. Okay. Now, let me go back to the beginning. Is there any question on any part of this review? It's the last part. All right. The last part. You mean this, this one? Yeah. Yeah, let me hear your question or your comment. Yeah, I can just continue. Go through it, okay. Now, this says, Identify any one of the ten object pronoun endings. Translate any two of the ten forms of men with their object pronoun endings. Okay. Now, the first six forms of men, which have the object pronoun endings added to them, are spelled M I M M. That's the main part. And to that you add the endings. Any, eka, e, enu, ena, enu. From me, from thee, from thee, from him, from her, from us. You add these endings to M I M M in the first six forms. But in the last four forms, you don't have the second mem placed here. You don't have it in the last four. Um, what you have in the last four are B, 
basically the object pronoun endings are attached directly to the mem. They are attached directly to the mem without another mem coming in between them, as in the first six. So you have mechem and you have meken, which is from you, masculine, from you, feminine. Now this would have been the same like up here, and it is similar in that there is no second mem, no second m coming here. But the reason there is a change from the short i to the long e is that if you're going to try to double this h, it cannot be doubled, it cannot be repeated. Because it has a harsh sound already, it is strong already, it does not need to be strengthened by repeating it. And since it does not take the dot in the middle of the H, the rule says that there has to be a lengthening of this short I, so you lengthen it from an H sound to an a sound, the E as in T-H-E-Y, they. You lengthen it from a kirik, you'll soon learn about those vowels, from an I sound to an A, E sound, a long E sound. Mayhem from them masculine, mayhem from them feminine. Any further question, not only from you, but anyone else? Lorraine? Good morning, sir. So, do you have any question about the revision, the review? What's that? I, I, um, Maxi, if he needs any help in preparation, you can give him whatever help he needs. Yeah. I have I what you said. Yes. I understand what you're saying. Yes. I understand what you're saying. Yes. I understand what you're saying. Yes. 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 Hebrew Bible. One day I'm going to bring you my big Hebrew Bible from home. They don't start Genesis at, the, at what we would call the front. Let me get my big Bible out here, my English Bible. When you take up any book, whether it's Spanish or French or English, we understand that the front is here. And not, not too far from here, we're going to find the book of Genesis. 
The book of Genesis is right here at the front. In the Hebrew Bible, the book of Genesis is right here at the back. It's right here. So they do everything, not just on one page. The very books are placed differently because the beginning is from the beginning is from the right. The beginning is from the right. Now this is the left and this is the right. The beginning of the book is from this side in Hebrew. In the land of Israel, this is where the beginning is. And the end is what you call the front. So to them, this is the front. And this is the back. To you, this is the front and that is the back. And to us, we start from the left margin and go to the right. They say, no, you start from the right and go to the left. If we, if we, if we, if we, if we start Hebrew, same time as when we start from English, how English English is to us, I think it would be, it would be less, less difficult. English. It would be less difficult. I born in English, so I know mm -hmm. I born in English. Okay, I, I do not know the answer to that question. All I know is that Moses wrote the first five books of the Hebrew Old Testament and that the language that God spoke to him in was Hebrew and that God's people were called the Hebrews. So he communicated to them in their own language. And that is why the Bible in its first half, the Old Testament is written mostly in the Hebrew language. Hebrew is um, from a, a word in Hebrew. I believe that word is pronounced avar which literally means to cross over. And there are scholars who think, I do not think that any of them is 100% sure. They think that because the, the descendants of Abraham were initially or at the beginning nomadic people that were crossing over from one place to another place, that they were called by that term Hebrew, people that are crossing over from one place to the other. Okay, any other question? Well, I'm glad that you are catching on. I'm glad that you are staying in the clubs, even though this is a lot of lessons ahead of what you are doing. And it just shows that in a short time from now, you will be a lot more familiar with what is happening. Yes, uh -huh. go as high as you can go for the benefit of God's people and the benefit of the world as a whole. So if I am a Yes. Well, you will have to know Hebrew very well to do that. And you will also have to have your dictionary or dictionaries, your Hebrew to English dictionary to say. Because you will find words in the Hebrew Bible that you were not taught about in class. But because you have a background knowledge of the rules governing the language, it will enable you to find that word in the dictionary. And you're able to add that word to your knowledge of the vocabulary in Hebrew. But yes, you would be able to read it. And the more you spend with it, the more years you spend with it is the more comfortable you will get with it. 
Okay, I'm going to let you go on this break. It's now 12.17. I'm really set to let you off at 12.20. But we have finished the review for our test. Our test is not tomorrow, but next week. What I plan to do tomorrow, God willing, is to go on to another lesson. I can go on to another lesson, but you're not going to be tested on that new lesson, only on what we have reviewed today. Tomorrow, God permitting, we're going to be looking at the sign or symbol of the definite object. It is not translated into English, but it is like a, a marker that tells you that the word that comes right after this word is the direct object in the sentence. You may ask, what is the direct object? In English, let me illustrate it by giving you this sentence. Maxime kicked the ball. That's football I'm talking about. Maxime kicked the ball. Now, Maxime is the subject. He is the person that is being spoken about. Kicked is the verb. That is the action he took. He kicked. But what did he kick? When you ask the verb what, the answer gives you the direct object. What did Maxime kick? The ball. The ball is the direct object of the verb kicked. Now in Hebrew, you may not ask the same question like what or who, but you are told what is the direct object whenever you see the Hebrew word a, the aleph, the, the sire, and the thou, the e-t-h, and it is also pronounced f when the accent is removed from from f eight it becomes f when you see eight or f you do not translate it it only tells you that what comes right after it is the direct object of the sentence so that's what i'll be looking at god permitting tomorrow but for your 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 test next week I will send this review to your email, and for most of you, all of you except Everton, you will study that in preparation for your test. But your test is going to be on writing the Hebrew alphabet in order. You can just do your best. If you find that you don't manage it at first, then I'll give a test to you again. But see if you can memorize it and, and do your best, because that's the foundation. It's the first step in the learning of the Hebrew language. Um, which one of four is in Hebrew? All right. Well, the word that I think you are referring to is the word that is spelled in English letters, Y-H-W-H. -H. Most Hebrew scholars believe that the original pronunciation was Yahweh, either Yahweh or Yahweh. That's God's personal name, very holy name, meaning the ever-being or the being who has always been, eternal. Now, it is not just that word, but original Hebrew did not have any vowel symbols. They only had consonants, but they did pronounce vowel sounds without any symbols to represent the sounds. So Hebrew people would be able to see just consonants on the page, different words made up of consonants, and be able to pronounce it free. But you and I, who are not Hebrew speakers, would have difficulty knowing how to pronounce it. 
Now, by about the third century before Jesus was born, the leaders of the Hebrew community said, we are afraid that someone in Israel may misuse God's personal name. And therefore, instead of saying God's personal name out loud, whenever you see his personal name in the Hebrew Bible, you need to call out some other word, like Adonai, which means Lord in English, or Elohim, which means God in English. So in the English translation, Whenever you see capital L-O-R-D, all capital letters, that is coming from Y-H-W-H. God's personal name is being replaced by this title. Or if you see all capital letters, G-O-D, it is the same personal name of God, which they are trying to replace with the title God. But if you just see a capital G and the common OD, it is not God's personal name that was there. Okay. So today in Israel, the most common replacement of God's personal name is the word Hashem. Ha is the definite article B, and Shem is the Hebrew word meaning name. That's common. When I go on the internet and I go on to Hebrew websites or I get Is Israeli news, whenever they are commenting on the Bible, they say Hashem. Even in the English translation, they put the Hebrew Hashem because they don't want to directly pronounce God's personal name. No, I don't think that it is wrong to call out God's personal name. They are only reacting to the possibility that somebody may misuse God's personal name. And the Ten Commandments says, I will not hold him guiltless who takes the name of the Lord in vain or misuses my name. So that's what they're afraid of. But God's personal name is right there in the Hebrew Bible. And it's not that God says you cannot call him by his personal name. Why would God's children be prevented from calling out God's personal name? Your name is Everton Tullock. You have a name that other people in here share, which is man. We're all men. But your name is Everton Tullock. Your name is, which one comes first again? Is it Maxime or Sherwood? Maxine, you have Robex, Orain. We're all men, but we have our personal name. God is the general name for the supreme being, but he has his personal name. Yahweh or Yahweh, the ever being, the eternal one. Okay, I'm going to let you off now. Thank you very much for your participation. And... Uh, <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us on the internet for this Hebrew class. And we will resume right after lunch. Lunch ends at 1.30. And so let us go to God in prayer at this time. And after that, we will break for lunch. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we pray you may bless the food and the drink you have provided. And we ask these favors in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.